Hello and welcome to this Monday edition of Jamaica Magazine. Today's show promises to give you a little of everything. First, you'll catch up on the 2016-2017 expenditure and revenue estimates. Then we'll single out our farmers as we continue to celebrate Farmers Month. We'll begin with some well-needed information about the influenza A H1N1 virus. Experiencing flu-like symptoms such as coughing, fever, or runny nose? Has it caused severe aches and pains? Is it difficult to breathe? Have you been feeling dizzy? What about diarrhea, vomiting, or dehydration? If the answer is yes, see your doctor or the nearest health center right away. These are all symptoms of the influenza A H1N1 virus. Be smart, seek medical attention today. Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your GIS News for Monday, April 18. The Jamaica Public Service JPS is rolling out its Smart City project, which will transform the national grid into a smarter grid. The concept, which is used by First World Nations, will see Wi-Fi and other technologies being added to the electricity grid. Among other things, it will facilitate remotely controlled streetlights and decrease the length of power outages. Under the first phase of the Smart City project, 20,000 smart meters will be installed across eight parishes by the end of the year at a cost of $341.6 million. In the meantime, the JPS says power has been restored to all parishes following widespread outages on Sunday night. JPS says its teams are also on the ground responding to reports of isolated pockets of power outages. National Security Minister Robert Montague has ordered an audit into Jamaica's capacity to detect and counter acts of terrorism while protecting the country's borders. We are faced with a terrorism threat. We are faced with a cyber attack. And our borders are porous. And many things are coming in into Jamaica, not from the recognized ports. And therefore, I've asked for that audit and the requisite recommendations because we have to be proactive. We cannot wait until there's an incident, then we react. The minister was responding to concerns at a town hall meeting last week in St. James. Police Commissioner Dr. Carl Williams, who was also at the function, said the police would be increasing the number of personnel deployed to St. James, as well as additional resources. We have already started to send additional vehicles out here. We don't have many, but wherever we can find them, we are sending them to St. James so that each station can have two vehicles, two reliable vehicles. In the meantime, the Jamaica Constabulary Force has been allocated $400 million in the budget to purchase vehicles. $855 million has been allocated to purchase telecommunication equipment to increase its communication and surveillance systems. Police stations will also be rehabilitated as $190 million has been allocated to carry out repairs. In terms of social intervention, Phase 3 of the Citizen Security and Justice Program will continue with an emphasis on conflict resolution, social inclusion and safety. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has reiterated that the newly formed Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation is working to cut bureaucracy and fast-track investments on the island. The ministry has responsibility for, among other things, economic planning and monitoring, investment promotion, agribusiness, factory construction, logistics hub and small business. To put under one umbrella all the critical agencies needed to make decisions so that the pathway to decision is clear, so that the number of decision makers are lessened, so that from the time of conception to the time of fruition is short and beneficial. The Prime Minister was speaking at the official opening of the courtyard by Marriott Hotel in New Kingston on Friday. 
Meanwhile, the Prime Minister has congratulated the organizers of Expo Jamaica, saying it served as a platform to develop businesses of all sizes. Some 320 booths were on display at the 43rd staging of the event, which ended on April 17. What the Expo does is to bring the healthy, growing, strong, robust, vibrant, innovative, creative firms to a market. Um, and it's a, it's a market for the buyers to come and look what products are available to take them to new markets. But it is also a retailer's market. Meanwhile, Culture Minister Olivia Grange said Expo Jamaica showcased the creative use of Jamaican produce which can be packaged for the export market. I'm in the Rada booth right now and I'm looking at all the, the Jamaican products. Um, ginger, turmeric, um, nutmeg and it's all creatively packaged for use and, and not only for local use but for export. So all of this is contributing to the creative economy. And that's it for GIS News Today. Amanda Chisholm, thank you for watching. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya and dengue viruses. Protect yourself from the bite of this mosquito. A message from the Ministry of Health. Security, investment and tourism were among the areas of focus of Prime Minister Andrew Holness this past week. Catch the highlights in Jamaica House Weekly. Given our economic growth agenda, and our development imperative. It is the intention of this administration to establish much closer ties with India. This government believes in free and fair trade, in open trade. But a weak Jamaica does not make strong trading partners. And you tell is a fabulous addition to the stock of rooms in Kingston. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Where the economic growth and development are top priority for government, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced plans to deepen ties with India. I have appointed Senator Aubin Hill as a special investment ambassador to India to develop strong economic, commercial and social ties with this growing economic powerhouse, which is modern India. The clear objective is to grow trade between our two countries and enhance our economic growth and job creation prospects. Prime Minister Holness was speaking Thursday at the inaugural Mona debates at the University of the West Indies Mona campus. The debates were held under the moot, marginalized Jamaicans have benefited from independence. The debates also served as a celebration of the 125th anniversary of the birth of Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar, one of the founding fathers of modern-day India. His ideas are significantly relevant for a vast majority of Jamaican people whose ancestors also experienced almost the same discrimination during slavery and much of the colonial period. Dr. Ambedkar dedicated his life to awaken the social conscience of modern India. He was a social reformer, a champion of human rights, and an emancipator of the downtrodden. It is clear that this year's staging of Expo Jamaica is sending some powerful messages to the world. Jamaica is business hub of the Caribbean. Prime Minister Andrew Holness opening the 43rd staging of Expo Jamaica on Thursday. While committing government support to the productive and manufacturing sectors, Mr. Holness also reiterated the need for fair trade. This government believes in free and fair trade, in open trade. But a weak Jamaica does not make strong trading partners. 
and a weakened Jamaica can't sustain trade in a way that's not fair and free. And so this government will be responsible, but we will be assertive in ensuring that we benefit from trade. And after touring booths on Saturday, Prime Minister Holness lauded the organizers of Expo Jamaica, saying the event supported the growth of businesses on the island. And what the Expo does is to bring the healthy, growing, strong, robust, vibrant, innovative, creative firms to a market. Um, and it's a, it's a market for the buyers to come and look what products are available to take them to new markets. But it is also a retailer's market. Prime Minister Holness also paid close attention to the tourism sector this past week. On Friday, he officially opened the Courtyard by Marriott Hotel in New Kingston. The hotel is a fabulous addition to the stock of rooms in Kingston. It adds value to brand Jamaica and to brand Kingston, which we intend to expand as a tourism destination in and of itself. We know the expectations are there and we have no intentions to disappoint. We intend to deliver on what we have committed to the Jamaican people. We will grow our economy. We will create jobs. We will reduce crime. We will build housing. And we will finally achieve the dream of Jamaica, the place of choice for you to live, work, do business, raise your family, and retire in paradise. The Prime Minister's pledge as he participated in a town hall meeting in St. James. It formed part of a series of town hall meetings organized by the Ministry of National Security. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has sent condolences to the government and people of Japan and Ecuador who have been impacted by earthquakes over the past few days. Mr. Holness pledged Jamaica's support for those countries as they sought to recover from the damage caused by the natural disaster. Mr. Holness, meanwhile, has asked Jamaicans to keep Japan and Ecuador in their prayers. And finally, the office of the Prime Minister was strengthened last week with the appointment of a state minister. I, Clifford Everell Harold Warmington, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Jamaica. Everald Warmington, who took the oath of office last Wednesday at King's House, now has responsibility for works. His appointment was necessary to ensure that the newly created Ministry of Economic Growth and Development within the office of the Prime Minister was fully equipped to execute its duties. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Join us again next time for more news coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Don't make diseases spread, wash your hands with soap and water instead. Wash them regular or use a hand sanitizer, make sure the germs them dead. Touching your eyes or your mouth or your nose, wash your hands before you do things like those. After you use the bathroom before preparing food, come on, wash your hand them clean. Government plans to spend approximately $580 billion this financial year. Get the details next. Roughly $580 billion. That's how much government plans to spend in the 2016-2017 fiscal year. You will see that the budget is in fact uh, very modest. In fact, in nominal terms, it's actually lower than last year. So that gives you a sign that we are not on any uh, excursion to, 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 to spend recklessly. But rather, we, what we have to do is to spend more smartly and make sure that every dollar is accounted for in a productive way. The budget is actually 28% lower than the $808 billion that was approved in last year's supplementary estimates. That revised budget reflected the $1.5 million US dollars used to fund the Petrocaribe debt buyback. For recurrent expenditure, that is money to deal with housekeeping expenses, government plans to spend $459.4 billion. That includes $181 billion to pay the wages and the salaries of public sector workers. 
it represents about 10.5% of Jamaica's gross domestic product. That means the goal to align public sector wages and salaries to 9% of GDP is programmed for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. In the meantime, government will implement critical aspects of the public sector transformation initiative to reduce costs. On the capital side of the budget, $120.6 billion will be used to fund various projects, including those for infrastructure development. Government will fund projects totaling roughly $91 billion, while multilateral and bilateral partners will be providing $29.6 billion in complementary funding. Let's take a look at the allocations for various ministries. As usual, the Ministry of Finance got the largest allocation, $290 billion, most of it to pay the country's debt. The second largest allocation went to the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, $93.1 billion. The National Security and Health Ministries also received sizable allocations. Of note also is the $19.55 billion to the new Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, which operates outside the office of the Prime Minister. As for the other ministries, so how will government fund it all? Approximately $485 billion is expected to come from revenues and grants. Here's the breakdown. $445.5 billion of that amount will be earned from taxes and $30.5 billion from non-tax revenue. The remainder will come from capital revenue and grants. The country is also expected to get $89.4 billion in loans to help fund the budget. Following the tabling of the budget on April 14, the Auditor General now has two weeks to assess the fiscal policy paper. The estimates of revenue and expenditure will then be presented to the Standing Finance Committee for a review, which of course is a committee of the whole House of Parliament. They will meet on May 3, 4 and 5 and Finance Minister Audley Shaw will open the budget debate on May 12. We're still celebrating Farmers Month, so in this next feature, it's all about youth in agriculture. Did you know that a goat eats three times more than a cow? Didn't know me either. Well, my name is Amanda Forbes, and today I'll be sharing some information with you about goat care and management. Now follow me. Well, this is my grandfather's goat pen and this is where I learned, well, some of the things that I learned about for goat care and management and I'll be teaching you more about the goats in this pen. They're very friendly. Well, this pen was created like this and it has lots of holes inside of the caves because goats love rocky area to get exercise in, right? So when they go up inside the pen, it protects them from the rain and they get a lot of exercise because they're actually going up and down on the hillsides. And they actually love this type of environment where they can interact with each other. You can actually tell the age of a goat by its feet. And especially when it has the first two front teeth pop out, you know that it's one year old. But when it starts to get spaced, you can actually tell the age. But when it has no teeth, you can actually know that it's months old. It's not really a year old. It's very young, despite how big they seem. Only 15 years of age, Amanda already has a wealth of knowledge in the care and management of goats. And in addition to being mentored by her grandfather, she has learned some of this information from her association with the Jamaica 4-H Club. 
in engaging hundreds of clubites through schools across the island, the 4-H club is grooming youngsters like Amanda to pursue agriculture as a viable career option, and she's a believer. Well, I would like to go to the University of the West Indies, UE, and I would like to try to follow in the career of biotechnology and in veterinary service of Caprine. Caprine is the veterination of goats, as I said before, and I would like to do biotechnician. This is when you do, this is genetic engineering. Amanda's passion to care for animals started when she was much younger. She could be seen caring for her dogs when they were hurt. I used to have these medicines in the house that I would actually treat them with. Then Grandpa would say, no, no, let her treat them myself because he had the treatment for them. This young St. Anne resident and student of Fern Court High School is destined for great things in the future. But today, she's our teacher. Do you know how to select a goat? Well, I'll teach you about that. For, uh, you say, a doe. A doe, you make sure that she's sturdy on the legs, just like that one over there. Stand, see the one standing on the stone? Sturdy on the legs, but you should have a wide barrel and a well-developed chest. And make sure that the udder is well attached, the big and tender and soft udders, so the, goats can, so the kids can actually get some nice milk from it. In preparation for breeding, actually, you should um, Expose the doors to fresh pastures, fresh green pastures so you can get some lots of succulent plants. Then afterwards, you give it like one to two pounds of 12 to 16 percent CP, that is concentrated um, protein from the industry. Then you deworm and delose them, and then you give them some vitamin supplements so they can be sturdy and well, well, very active, so they can get to do what they want to do. You know what I mean. This natural talent comes also the comedic side to Amanda, which she uses to entertain her friends. <laughs> when I'm down like this, they make me smell like this. <laughs> but they said, you sure you don't want to do acting? They said, you could fit in here. And I said, mm -mm -mm. There are three things that matter most to Amanda. I love school and I love my best friends, really. And I enjoy working with animals very much. So much is that love for the care of animals that she was awarded the Jamaica 4-H Club Championship Trophy for Goat Care and Management at the 2014 National Expo. She is now the national representative in this category. With this knowledge and that which she will acquire in her future studies as a veterinarian, Amanda hopes to help her grandfather with his goats. And there are other plans. And I would like to apply to the Japanese Embassy for the scholarship that they're offering and then I would like to get a job over, over there and here if it's possible. Then I could actually um, promote the, production, the industry of goat production to, from Jamaica to Japan. And so in her spare time, she reads manga, a Japanese comic that helps her to learn the language and the culture. Amanda's forward-thinking approach is one that's embraced by the government as it positions the agriculture sector for growth and sets up a promising future for the youth. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. In a pen, you should make sure that the feeders are designed in a way so to discourage the goats from stepping on the feeds or fecal contamination. And you should make sure that they, when they are going out to a pasture, I would recommend that the pasture have like grass length like this. I wouldn't like them to actually grow on the ground because you're actually risking the ghost to ingest worms and you wouldn't like that because this will formulate in a loss later on. The youths, positioning themselves to make a difference and continue the growth in agriculture. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Food is essential to our well-being. Getting to work on time is equally important. Here are some viable options to keep you healthy while staying clear of the red L beside your name.
ingredients are simple. We'll be adding about half pound of flour. Then to that we'll add the sardine. Sapphire will be helping me to add them. And a bit of onions. And seasoning for taste. Basically any cheese can be used. Any one of your choice. Just a bit of baking powder. And how many family members would that serve for? This should serve up to six family members. So Sapphire will be incorporating all the ingredients now. Just stir them Sapphire. And we'll add a bit of water. It's a very quick dish to make and it's cost effective. And how long does this take? This should take no longer than two minutes. This dish is full or filled with a lot of calcium that comes from the cheese and also omega-3 that comes from the sardine. And as we established before that omega-3 is good for the heart, it prevents from heart disease. And that's basically it. We'll now move over to the fire. So basically what we'll be doing is just spooning a bit of the mixture into the fryer. And how many per serving? I would say six. Give it a quick flip. And as you can see, it's almost done. Wow, it really takes three minutes. Even less than three minutes. So this is another quick and easy way to make breakfast. We're now joined by Balford Carr, and he'll be assisting in making the breakfast smoothie. The ingredients we'll be using for the smoothie are banana, which is a good source of potassium and vitamin C. We also have mangoes, which is also a good source of vitamin C, A and B. Pineapples, another good source of vitamins. We also have oatmeal, which is a good source of fiber. To add to that, we have milk. But if you are vegan, the substitutes for it is almond milk or coconut milk. We know kids don't like spinach. So what we're doing today is disguising the spinach in the shake. And fruits are said to disguise uh, vegetables. So what can you use instead of spinach? You can substitute spinach with callaloo, kale, or string beans. Those are good sources of iron. That's uh, a bit of syrup, just to add color. Because you know, people eat with their eyes first, especially kids. So just to make this, this, this shake a bit more attractive, or pleasant to the eye, appealing to the eye. If you don't have a nutri bullet, you can use a regular blender. Yeah, go ahead. And can that be substituted for a meal? Yes, it can. It has all the essential vitamins and nutrients. And that's our show. We hope you were thoroughly informed. Get more of this kind of positivity by visiting our website, gis.gov.jm. We're also on all the major social media sites, so keep in touch with us while you're on the go. You may also download our new app from the Google Play Store. On behalf of the entire team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you for watching. 
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.